Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. So far in our exploration of expression maps in Dorico, every time we've added a switch, it's been a base switch. But hang on, this section of the dialogue is called base and add-on switches. So what the hecky peck is an add-on switch? And why might you want to use one? And what's the deal with this init switch that's always hanging about? Watch this video to find out. We've talked lots about base switches throughout this series about playback in Dorico. So please hop back and catch up if you're new to expression maps. It's worth getting the full picture. Add-on switches though, they're new. So what's the difference? Well, the question you need to ask yourself when adding a new switch is, can you apply this musical technique at the same time as all other techniques? Let's think about a performer playing the violin. We can play the violin arco using the bow. We can play pizzicato by plucking the strings. We can play consort with a mute or a light, airy flautando, tremolo, or even flip the bow upside down and play colenio. Now, you may have noticed that all of these techniques are being controlled by the bow hand. At the same time that any of these techniques are in effect, you can choose for the left hand to add vibrato. It doesn't stop or change any of those bow techniques. It just adds or removes a level of vibrato. And this is what we use an add-on switch for. Let's look at an example. In the previous video, we saw how to control the vibrato effect of Spitfire Audio's solo strings library. And I mentioned how it was perhaps better suited to being an add-on switch. So let's have a look at how we set that up. I'm using the solo violin performance preset, so I don't need to worry too much about key switches for things like legato and staccato. As before, let's assume the natural state of the violin sound should include vibrato. So as we saw in the previous video, we can add a control change action to the natural switch using CC21 at a value of 127. This time, let's add a technique add-on switch and let's add it for non-vibrato. Create a control change action again for CC21, this time with a value of zero. Now, something we haven't discussed before is this toggle for on events and off events. For the most part, you don't need to worry about adding off events for base switches as either another switch replaces the current settings or we return to the natural state. However, for add-on switches, it's best to say what should happen when you reach the end of the add-on region. And you can do this with an off event. You can create all the same types of action for off events. But here, we want to reset the vibrato to on. So we'll add a control change action 21 with a value of 127. Just to recap, when we reach a non-vibrato marking in the score, our add-on switch will kick in and the on event will trigger a control change action on CC21, setting the vibrato amount to zero. When we reach the end of the non-vibrato playing technique region, our off event will set CC21 back to 127. Let's have a look at a slightly more involved, but perhaps a more natural example. For the full string section instruments in Spitfire Symphony Orchestra, there are three levels of vibrato, not just on and off. In this case, it might be nice for the natural state of the instrument to be in the middle. A good way to specify this can be to use the init switch. Now we haven't talked about this before. The init switch sends an instruction when playback starts. This could be something like ensuring an external MIDI controller always starts at a set value, or it could be resetting things such as the pedal line state of a keyboard instrument, or as in this case, resetting the vibrato amount. 
So we can use the init switch in this example to set the vibrato to the midpoint, which is going to be 64, and then create add-on switches to vary the vibrato intensity. We know how to do this for non-vibrato. Remember to add the off event as well. But we can also create an add-on switch for the vibrato technique, or you could even create your own molto vibrato technique. This time setting the value to the full 127, and again, returning to 64 with the off event. And let's also show the power of add-on switches by introducing a switch to mute the strings. Because the vibrato switches are add-ons, they will work in the exact same way, regardless of whether mutes are toggled on or off. Again, watch the vibrato and mute sliders closely as we play back. Incidentally, because the vibrato and mute presets are controlled the same way in all the string performance presets, we can use the same expression map for all the string section instruments in this instance. One more thing I wanted to say about switches. There is a checkbox to enable switches. When unchecked, the switch is disabled and will not take effect. This can be useful in a couple of different ways. Perhaps you're working on building an expression map and are trying a few different variations of how to control a particular preset. Disabling the ones you're not using means you don't have to remove them entirely, so you can quickly try things out and then keep the one that works best for you. Also, in a previous video, I've shown how some presets have more than one technique that you may wish to use as the natural state of the instrument. Often, this is the monophonic legato technique versus the polyphonic long technique. So create two natural bass switches, one with a key switch for the legato technique, the other with a key switch for the long technique, and then disable one of them. If you then reuse this expression map in future projects, perhaps by way of saving it in a playback template, you can choose on a per project basis which natural switch to use. So that's base and add-on switches, and also the init switch in Dorico's expression maps. Next time, we'll continue to work our way through the expression map dialog and take a look at note conditions. If you've enjoyed this video, I would be so grateful if you could click the like button below. Thank you. And please do subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.